Hello everyone, how are you doing? It is Throwback Thursday. <laughs> Welcome to Throwback Thursday. Um, I can see how many people are watching, but I don't see the little icons of who you are. So if you wanted to say, shout out and say hi in the comments, that would be perfect. Share, share, share. We're all in this together, especially now that we're moving through to the rebuilding. You guys have heard me say this often, 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 that this whole phase, and it's not just tied in to what I call the zombie apocalypse. It, this has been growing and been preparing and being prepared for, for who knows how long. And it's going through the phases, the first phase, which is what we've really seen break through into the physical here in this last year plus, has been like the demolition phase. You've again heard me say this, but it's like you have an existing house sitting on a foundation. You've renovated it as much as you can, but it's time for a new house because the changes that are coming into play and that you've desired for so long, often without even realizing you've desired them, are now coming to fruition. But in order to put the new house on the existing foundation, you got to get rid of the old house. So a lot of what's been happening in this last while has been the demoing, if you will. Oh, geez, I bet this is one of my foreigner friends. <laughs> got a lot of them, foreigner friends, uh, or potential spam. That's the other one, who knows where. But, um, so that the existing house needs to be demolished before the new house can be built. And once it's demolished, then the foundation needs to be inspected for cracks or for weaknesses that maybe need to be repaired and shored up. Also, the foundation maybe need to be expanded because this new house is so much bigger than the old house. So that process, and then it moves through into the rebuilding and build not even so much rebuilding, but building something brand new. Now, it's not that these are hard delineated changes. So the majority, if you will, the focus has been on removing, demolishing, if you will, it moves through to the strengthening of the foundation and now is moved into the building of this new house. Now there's still gonna be some cleanup in the other two, but the, the fundamental work has been done. So now we're building this massive new house, which is just amazing and perfect, which kind of fits in with the topic of throwback Thursdays because understanding that when we're manifesting, I find so often we're focused on, and the topic for this show is it has to do with hot weather, a neighbor named Joe and a freezer. And the title for this that I've used before in the past is how long does it take to make ice? This is something that some of you may have heard before. I've used it at different workshops, even did some broadcasts on it. Understanding the mechanics of how you make ice. And you may go, okay, this is kind of dumb, even for you. But it's a really powerful understanding. And I find it really helps us wrap our head around a clarification in what we're when we're manifesting what are we really doing what are we really creating are we creating the outcome or are we creating the environment that's conducive to creating the outcome so in a very real way let's bring on mr flip charts so in a very real way this is the environment come on I think I'm going to have to try going back to my old flip chart. This one just isn't quite one I want to do. The environment that creates the outcome. Or your desire. What's the heat on this? Yeah, not bad. Or your desire. In. Oh, this is bad. You know what? I have. That's so wrong. Um. Yeah, I'm going to flip back to the old guy. For the longest time, oh well, there we go. In the, oh, she's not responding really well. So you create the environment, and the environment is what produces the outcome. Now, now this is a really important clarification. So when we're manifesting, we're not creating this. 
And this is one of the areas I know for me, I often trip myself up in. I've got the desire and I go, okay, I'm doing all these, these things that I do that creates the desire or the outcome, but that's not it. This environment is what produces or creates the outcome. So our job, yes, you have a desire. I get all that for sure. That's step one in the manifesting process. Then in so many respects, our job is to create and maintain this environment that's conducive to the outcome that we're looking for. Okay, does that make sense? Let's go back to the story. Okay, so it's a hot day and you're looking for some, you want some lemonade or something like that. So it's a hot day and you, you just love really cold lemonade, lots of ice and all that kind of stuff. So you go, okay, well, um, I, I need some ice. Okay, so in our map, where's the ice? This is the ice. Okay, so that's the ice. That's what you're looking for. So then you go, okay, so I want ice. Now, huh. hmm, how, how am I going to get ice? How am I going to do that? And you remember seeing your neighbor, Joe. Now, your neighbor, Joe, he has like, great ice, right? You often see him with a big picture of lemonade. It's full of ice. And you go, now that, you know what? That's the ice that I want. So you go, okay, I want some ice just like Joe. I should be able to do it though. I mean, I mean, I've kind of watched them. And so, well, okay, what do I need? Well, I guess, uh, well, I need a tray, right? Like an ice cube tray. Yeah. Okay. So I get the tray. So I got that. Um, well, I, I need to put water. Okay. So I put water in the tray. Okay. So now I have an ice cube tray. I have water in the tray, but notice I don't have ice yet. So I got the water, I put it in the tray, and I know I've seen Joe taking it out of the freezer. Okay, so I take the tray, I put water in the tray, I put the tray in the freezer, then it closes the door. Okay, I think we're good, right? Now, so what we've done is we've created an environment that's conducive to the outcome, right? Which is ice. Yeah, are you with me so far? Now. Here's what you do. You put the water in the tray, you, you put the tray in the freezer, you close the freezer door, you open the freezer door and you go, hmm, I, I don't see any ice. Just, uh, no, no, here's the real key, right? And you go, I did everything right. So up here creating the environment, right? I put water in, I got the ice cube tray, I put it in the freezer. Uh, this flip tray doesn't work. You're going to have to go back to the other one. I put it in the freezer, but I don't have ice. What am I doing wrong? So you go, well, you know what? Uh, uh, maybe I don't have the right water. So you go out and you buy some mineral water, some really good quality mineral water. Because you go, you know, if I got really good quality mineral water, it's going to make some kick-ass rice, uh, rice, ice. So, oh, God, what was that? Ah! Oof, let's try that again. So, some kick-ass ice. So you go and you get the mineral water. You put the mineral water in the tray. You put the tray in the freezer. Close the freezer door. You open the freezer door and you go, no ice. I don't know. Maybe the tray? Maybe the tray's wrong. Okay, so you go out and buy a tray. Fancy tray. Fancy, fancy tray. So now you notice what you're doing is you're working on these pieces here, right? And what you're saying is, I've got the right pieces to create the environment. So why don't I have the outcome yet? So what you do is you start, this is really good. So what you do is you change up the pieces. Maybe it's the right, not the right affirmation. Maybe I, maybe I, I need to do a different visualization. Maybe it's this technique. Maybe it's that technique. So, so often we keep switching up the devices. Yes. Different water, different tray, whatever. We keep switching up the devices, looking for the outcome. Why is it not here? So you go, huh, I, I don't know. I don't know what am I doing wrong? I've, I've tried different waters. I've tried different ice cube trays. I put it in the freezer, like, and I still don't have ice. So you go, okay, well, I'm gonna go over and ask Joe. So you go over and see Joe and you say, uh, Joe, man, I, I, I really want some 
I love the lemonade that you have and all the big chunks of ice and all that kind of stuff. And I've been trying to make ice and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Joe says, oh, okay, well, uh, so tell me, tell me what you've done. And so I went, okay, well, um, I got an ice cube tray and I put water in it. And Joe says, okay, all right. And, uh, you know, Joe, I don't, I don't know. Like I've, I've tried different ice cube trays. I've tried different types. I got some me some expensive mineral water, right? From like a glacier in the Antarctica or something like that. Like good quality water. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Say, well, well, Joe says, well, just keep going. Just, just keep going here. Okay. So, so I got this tray, tried different trays, right? Got the water, tried different waters. Okay. And then I put it in the freezer and uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have ice. Joe says, uh, well, uh, d- dumb question, but the freezer is plugged in, right? I go, well, yes, the freezer is plugged in. I'm not stupid, right? I know you got to plug the freezer in. Joe says, oh, okay. Oh, well, I was just checking. And Joe says, all right, so you got the ice cube tray. Yep. You put water in the ice cube tray. Yep. You put it in the freezer. Yes. Hmm. I don't know. You you seem to have all the right pieces. You seem to have all the right pieces to produce the outcome. Why don't you have why? Joe says, huh. Um well, uh, uh how long did you leave it in the freezer? You go, what? Joe, so, so how long did you leave the ice cube tray with the water? in the freezer go, oh, what <laughs> joe says well <laughs> you gotta leave it in the freezer for a while in order for ice to form huh <laughs> okay this so joe he's he's got a lot of patience joe does and joe shares a profound truth that we could learn a lot from And Joe says, it's absolutely vital that you've got water in the tray and you put it in the freezer. You've created the environment. The environment that will produce the outcome that you're looking for. And Joe says, remember, you might want ice. But you don't, nor can you, make ice. It's the environment that you create and you maintain that will produce the ice for you. Now, this is really powerful. When you're manifesting this new house is being constructed, it's like all bets are off. What do you want? Not what you think you can have is what do you want? And you can put all the pieces together, but you're not the one that creates the house. You're not the builder for the house. The environment produces the effect. Your job is to create that environment and maintain that environment. And the environment, as you maintain it, produces the results. Big, big difference. You do not manifest your desires. You create and maintain the environment. The environment produces the outcome, which is your desires. So I go home with my newfound knowledge. Put water in the tray, put the tray in the freezer, close the door, and I don't open it all the time looking for results because I've learned now if I open the door, nope. Open the door, nope. Open the door, nope. I'm actually really defeating the process because I've created the environment, right? Cold, water, tray. But if I keep opening the door to see if there's ice yet, now I'm not maintaining that environment, am I? See? See how this fits with manifesting? This is where persistence, determination, bullheaded stubbornness is so, so valuable. 
And so you leave the door closed especially in the beginning and you're going to be tempted to go is it here yet no is it here yet no is it here yet no and what you're going to do is just leave it yeah if you want to check but just remember every time you check it's warming up right and so i leave it in the freezer for like longer just i want to look i want to look i want to look but no 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 maintain the environment maintain the environment maintain yeah yeah no no then I take a peek and it's, I can see a little skiff of ice in the top of the water. There's still water, but I can see a little skiff of ice. And it's like, oh, 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 your desire isn't here yet in its fullness, but it, you can see it's the effects of it. And this is often what happens. As you maintain that environment, you probably won't see like a big chunk of ice right away, but you'll see indicators that the water is freezing, which produces the outcome. See, when you think about it, the water doesn't disappear and ice replaces it. The water just changes form, doesn't it? Right? So in a way, as soon as you create that environment, your desire is right there. It's just not necessarily in the form that you're looking for it yet. So when you create that desire, and that just happens, then you build the environment. The mechanics for the manifestation of your desire are in place and now moving. You might not be able to see it yet, but just because you can't see it doesn't mean the water, those pieces are not transforming into something different, which is why step one, which is a demolishing of the house, right? In order for ice to appear, water has to change form, right? So the, the ice of the old house is melting, if you will, and now it's water, and now it's changing form into a, it's still ice, but it's totally different configuration. So you open the door, you see a little bit of skip, you go, oh, yes, 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 right? It's not all here. Yeah, it's not all here. Close the door, close the door, right? Celebrate, you can see some ice. Close the door and just leave it. Just leave. go do something else. Just go do something else, right? So you're not so tempted to look. Is it there yet? Is it there yet? And of course, you know, just because you're not looking doesn't mean ice isn't being formed, which is another place we trip ourselves up. Because we go, if I'm not checking on this all the time, if I'm not thinking about this all the time, if I'm not visualizing on this all the time, if I'm not doing all this stuff, then it's not happening. Then the process stops if I'm not pushing it, right? It's like pushing a rock up a hill. If I'm not pushing it, it doesn't go anywhere. See. Once you've got that environment maintained, in so many respects, if you just leave it alone, it'll do what it needs to do. Which is sometimes the best thing you can do when you have a problem you have to solve is don't try and solve the problem. At least for now, go do something else. You've got your desire. So start to vibrate like the solution. How do you do that? Well, one of the things is don't vibrate with the problem. How do you do that? Well, don't go check, no, check, no, check, no. Is it fixed yet? No, is it fixed yet? No, is it fixed yet? No. The normals will think you're crazy. The normals think you're lazy. The normals think you got a problem. You have to focus on fixing of it, fixing it. But you understand vibrational mechanics. Vibrational mechanics is, this is really good. Vibrational mechanics is the vibration of the solution is different than the vibration of the problem. If you're constantly focusing on the problem, you're vibrating like the problem, which means you're not going to get the solution. If you're constantly open the door, what am I doing wrong? Wrong water, wrong ice, close the door. You're not going to get ice. Create the environment. Leave it alone. So Joe leaves it alone. And then he almost forgets about it, but he goes, oh, right. I was mm, mm, lemonade. I wonder if there's ice. So he goes, he opens the door. There's the ice. Now, has the water disappeared? No, it's just changed form, which is why when the laws of manifesting say that as soon as you have the desire, as soon as that problem is created, the solution is also created as well. It's just not in a form that you can experience. The water didn't leave. It just changed form. And this is why those, those problems, to use that word and things like that, the more we focus on them, the more we don't allow them to change and transform into the solution. Because in so many respects, no, in so many respects, the same mechanics that are creating the problem, the nuts and the bolts, is what's going to transform into the solution. 
which is why when we get so attached to the problem, so get so attached to our desire not showing up, get so attached to what we don't have. In a way, we're, we're actually in a very powerful way hindering the process because the mechanics that create the problem are the same mechanics that create the solution. But if we're constantly checking, 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 we're slowing that process down. When you think about it, if you're constantly open that door, changing the water, changing the tray, you're never going to get ice. And that's where things like trust and faith and all that comes, stuff comes into play. It's about letting go of it and going, okay, maintain the environment, make sure the plugs, the fridge is plugged in, the door doesn't get opened by anybody else. We're doing that. And the, the environment creates the outcome. Perfect. Thanks for tuning in. As always, guys, share, share, share. We're all in this together. Really powerful teaching today. Uh, the story is expanded in some areas that I haven't told before. So I think that's so cool. This has been... All right, guys, see you on the web.